Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It is June 9th. This will be our chart lesson for today. It's going to be quick and easy. Not a lot of trades today. Um, we really stayed in this tight range for most of the day, and this is what's interesting. Notice where we touched the top up here twice, and how long it took to get down here to the lows. And by the time we got there, we shot on through. There, there's a little bit of a down channel here that you might, you could have possibly looked at this. Let's just see if we can, something like this right here. Um, I don't know that that helps you a whole lot. If it does, by all means, put it on there. We ended up overshooting it down here. Maybe it's more like that because that does fit as well. Uh, but that just takes this uh, part of this original up here where I had it and just maybe you had it like this and it just doubles it. So uh, you could have looked at it like that. And if you had your measured moves, that gets you really close. Actually, you'd probably want it off those closes right there like so and you see that gets you to the tick down here to this measured move and that makes this a midline in the end so if you saw it like that that's great i played this as a range and just used my micro channel and you can see every one of them just about you know you're moving down you get a break and new low you're moving up you get a break and new high you're moving down you get a break new low moving up you get a break new high moving down you get a break new low moving up you get a break new high moving down break new low moving up, break new high, and so forth. We got a little sideways here. You can see how flat the EMA got. Uh, but you probably could do the same thing um, with this as well. But you can see every one of them played out perfect price action, basically. And there's a lot of failed second entry longs in here that were fairly uh, consistent. I meant to mark this one in a green here so we could at least talk about it and i want to talk about this trade right here this is a this is this was really disappointing but after the fact i see uh, i actually took this trade and had a little small loser here and it went exactly where i thought it was going to go but my timing was off and uh, we'll talk about that when we get there so uh, i want to mark that one because i'm figuring maybe and the real reason i really there's some reasons not to take this trade even though it is a failure or it looks like a failure because you, there's multiple ones in here all day and, and every one of them worked. And so it's like a repeat pattern. And generally those repeat patterns work extremely well. And in this case, they didn't. So there's another uh, one right here that I didn't mark. I meant to mark it green too. Uh, but I'll show you these repeat patterns in here all day long. And once you start to see them over and over, you know, pay attention to them. There's even one right here. I didn't mark this one because of congestion. It would have worked well. It's probably the best one of the day, really. But you can see how flat that is. And you can see the this was the lows. Uh, you might have moved this up at some point where you get the touch of the most lows, which would have been right across there. And you do see that tends to still fit really well on the midline. So I think that's where it was in the end. Um, but it doesn't change much because we're bouncing at different places here. That's what makes these kind of days hard. When you consistently bounce off the lows and the highs of the range, they're easy days. I mean, because they're almost a gimme. But when they turn at different places like this, you've got to use these short-term trend lines and trend channels, and they, you know, and let them play out pretty much. So let's uh, let's zoom in. Talk about these trades. It won't take long, and then we'll wrap this up. But you can clearly see we were working sideways, and then we had this little trend up right before, right into 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock comes right in here somewhere uh, on this congestion to pull back. And notice what happens. You got a new swing low, and you get a first entry, and then a second entry, and it fails right off the key entry point. So you may take that one. The reason I mark this one green, it's early in the day. Uh, there's a lot of resistance there, and that looks like congestion. So it's a risky trade. It works. Uh, and you might have wanted to take it anyway because you only really see one leg up, so you would expect to get another attempt at another leg up there. So it's one to consider. Uh, but then we we get the 
close outside, new high, and then you get a first entry long, second entry long. It fails. Um, I like going short one tick below that. Generally, you want this to be on the other side, but you can see we clearly went through here a couple of times and pulled back. And it looks like we got a channel here with the first break. So there's a good chance we run down and make a new low. So I like that one. You could argue that it's real close to being green, but because it is on the other side of the EMA, and sometimes that'll trip you up. But there's also a double top there, and it's a lower high than this. There's a double top here, and then a lower double top. So, and that's another good sign. And the fact that it's a trap, that's the real biggie, especially since we've been trending up because there's going to be a lot of longs that have to get, they're going to have to exit here. They realize they're wrong when that happens. And then what they do, they take it right back to the same place again. And you can see this, you're moving up and you only get a first entry here. First entry short and a first entry long. Uh, it is the first break, but I just don't think you can take that. And you don't get a chance to go short. And then you run down here, you make another new low. You get a close outside. You try to go lower once, and then you make that higher low, which is a failed second entry short. So you might want to go long there. It's it. It's not a bad setup, but the problem is you've got this pretty steep, tight trend channel, and we've had a break but no new low yet. And it, so there's a good chance we might run up here and break higher and then turn down, which is really what happened, but you got enough out of it to get your scalp and then it turns down. And so notice you working up, you get a close outside new high, and then you get a new low here. And if it breaks lower there, we're probably going to drop on down. That's what you would think you would, you would expect to get a measured leg similar to this one, probably. And that gives you back down here to the lows. We don't quite get there. Uh, but of course, you, you're moving down. You get a close outside and a new low. And there's actually, notice again here, I didn't mark this one, but this is another one. Uh, it's another, uh, actually, let me back up here. I'm not even going, you could go short right there. Notice this new high and you get a first entry. And then it tries to go higher right there. It, it doesn't break higher. So technically it's not a failure, but that's the actual two legs and the failure. And somebody else said they took it down here and they're using the counts down here, like first entry, uh, second entry, uh, and using that as a failure. That's too far away from the EMA. You didn't even get back to it. Um, it's the first close outside of here and you only got to go to right about here to get a new tick and then it could reverse. If you're going to trade this as a failure, this is where you'd want to do it right here. Even though you don't get the break higher, look at the look at the price structure, the structure of the price action here on the chart. You can clearly see the first entry, and then we try to go higher again when we push through the EMA and pull back and test it. That's where you generally want it to break higher, and then when it fails, you want to go lower. And by the time you get way down here, you're, it's just too far gone. So, uh, especially all in one move. So I hope that's clear. But then of course we get the close outside new low and then you get a first entry and then a second entry. And that's pretty ideal failure right there. And this one pulls on up Then you get a first entry, second entry. This is a little congestive, but the fact that you've got that support across there, uh, the EMA, the trend line, look how we close inside the trend line. You still got enough room to get out. And that works out to be a pretty good trade. There's actually a second entry short right there too, but this trend channel is still in play and we're not back to the highs yet. So I don't think you can justify taking a short there. You're still looking for longs and you actually get another reversal right here. Notice that low first entry, second entry. Uh, I didn't mark this one because look at all that resistance there. You just don't want to go long in that. It works. And maybe because it was a trap, and you can see how many times they were trying to push it through there. So they finally they let it go lower and it traps people. But I don't think you want to go long there. I, I think you want to try to short it on the breakout. You'd really prefer to wait on a lower high. But the way this market's been doing and how sideways this is, I think that's worth the risk to go short there. Um, just to ride it back to the EMA and try to get a scalp and hopefully it turns down, which it does. And then notice you get a first entry and then a second entry and it turns down right there. And uh, uh, there's actually a second entry short a few minutes later when it breaks higher again. 
but this was one I wanted to take this one, but that by the time that closed is a doji, you got one, two, three, four bars stacked up side by side there. You just can't take that even on a trap. I don't think it's worth taking because see what happens. It stops you out and then goes exactly where you think it would. And my spider senses told me to stay away from that one. And um, then I talked myself into one over here in a minute. We'll talk about that was that looked that wasn't much better, but it didn't. Of course, it didn't turn out like this one. And the reason I like this one is because you've been seeing this pattern over and over, and it's been working. So um, I really thought it'd work again. And here it is again. We come down here, we make a new low, then first entry, second entry. Now, normally, I wouldn't like a second entry below the EMA, but there's enough room to scalp out almost. And this is a range day, so we'll probably flip back through. Um, the other problem is there's a lot of congestion. So I mark this one as green. You know, you could take it, but I'm not crazy about it. Uh, I think it's a little aggressive. But you do make a new low there, and you work up first entry, and then second entry, it fails. So if it breaks higher there, and that's the first close outside, so we're going to push higher. Good for a scalp, and that's it. And then you first entry, second entry, and so go short right there, which I talked about. And what happens? You get burned, and then it runs right down to where you thought it would go. And here's the thing about this. By the time that closed, you've got a doji right there, a bar here with a lot of stem. Look at all that stem up there. And so it's, and then you got this bar that they're all inside pretty much. Um, so it's just a dumb trade. But when, you know, really what, what you're looking at is this is really looks like, even though it ticks higher there, that's really all one move down, one leg down really. And then you got a two-legged correction and then you get your next move down. So the failure really came right here. And it also was a second entry short. You couldn't take that inside ball to second entry short, but you might take it on a failure. So uh, I don't even like that trade on a failure. If you didn't, if you didn't take it right here and get burned like I did, then you know you probably just want to skip this because that, by that time it's definitely a lot of sideways congestion. Um, and then it comes down here and makes a triple bottom. This one is tempted to go long because once you try to go th low three times and can't. If it breaks higher here, you're going to probably get a scalp, and it may keep going. So that's another one. Uh, the only reason I didn't like it is because, again, you've got one, two, three, four bars all stacked up as inside bars there. They're all inside this bar completely. And then this one's inside this one. And then this one's still inside this one. So it's, it, it, it makes it a little – it's just not ideal. Again, you could probably argue for it to be green. And, of course, it runs up, fails, and turns down, and boom, and it's just off to the races. A little disappointing, but, um, you know, why didn't it do it here? But that's the way the market does you sometimes. It's all about your timing sometimes. And if and there's enough reason there to see those three bars, and two of them, this one definitely a tiny body, and this one getting close. And all it does is run your stop and then go where you think it's going to go uh, anyway. Uh, it drops on down, and it takes us into two o'clock. Uh, there's, there's actually a. You could look at this as a. Uh, there's a new low there, first entry, second entry, but that just looks like one leg up, and that signal bar is not any good anyway. So you really can't go short there. And then at this point, all you got to work on is this, and that's your close outside. And to make a new low, you don't have far to go, and I don't think it's worth taking. You can see how it was bouncing there at the. The previous support that's the close from yesterday or whatever so um anyway not a great trading day there's a few there's a lot of greens and you know there's one two three four five either red or blue ones not many and you had to be real patient and uh so just not a great trading day um and i know i certainly made a mistake today on this trade right here so if you got tricked right there that's the key is uh what i told you about that's really one move down even though it broke higher right there i don't think that was convincing enough and 
traders want to see it break higher again and then your failure is right there one tick below that bar and then it works so and you get your second leg down and then it does something else here and comes back up makes a little double top for it off to the races so anyway that's what i saw today uh not the best trading day not a lot of choices today but uh anyway we'll be back again to do it tomorrow i'm done for today this is mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com and we'll see you next